This is a story of a legend. Lasit Borfukon was a military leader similar to the stature of Chhatrapati Shivaji and Rana Pratap. All the three fought for the freedom of their region and people against Mughal imperialism. Lasit Barfukan was the son of Mumai Tamuli Borburwa, who rose from a humble beginning to become a governor in the Ahom Kingdom and also commander of the Ahom Army. Thus, Lasit had the upbringing available to the children of nobility of his times. His father arranged for his education in humanities, scriptures and military skills. As he grew up, he was given position of responsibility. He was made the scarf bearer of the Prime Minister, functioning like his private secretary. He was later appointed the Ghora Borua or the superintendent of the royal horses. Then as the commander of Simulugar Fort and the superintendent of the household guards. Mir Jumla, the Mughal Viceroy of Bengal invaded Assam in 1662. He was the only invader who achieved success in Assam. Due to internal dissension, the Ahom leaders could not put up any worthwhile resistance. King Zoidhos Hingho abandoned his capital and withdrew to Namrup Hills. Mir Jumla occupied the Ahom capital in Korga. Before retreating from Gorgaon, Mir Jumla imposed a humiliating treaty on the Ahoms. A war indemnity of 3 lakhs was levied along with an annual tribute of 20 elephants. Two Ahom princesses, the daughter and the niece of the king, were taken into the harem of the Mughal Emperor. The Ahom king was also made to cede the western territory from Guwahati to Manoch. During the invasion of Mirjumla, Lasith had been sent on a tribute collection mission to one of the vassals of the king. He returned only after the Ahom capital had fallen to the Mughals. However, he gained local success against Mughals in an engagement at Dikhom. Mirjumla's victory at Gorgao turned out to be much like Napoleon's at Moscow just as the French Grand Army had to retreat from Moscow and got decimated in Russian winter. Similarly, the Mughal army retreated from Gorgaon, got decimated due to monsoon, malaria and dysentery. Mirjumla died while withdrawing to Dhaka. Meanwhile, King Joydhaw Singha died a broken man and was succeeded by his nephew, King Sokradhaw Singha. The dying king on his deathbed exhorted his successor and his nobles to remove the spear of humiliation from the heart of the nation. The new king was determined to retrieve national honor and ordered elaborate preparation for recovering the territory lost to the Mughals. The countryside had been devastated and depopulated. Stocks of food and war materials had to be built up and an expeditionary army organized and trained. He also sought help from neighboring tribes and rulers particularly the ruler of Koch Bihar. All this took time and the preparations for an expedition against the Mughals were completed by 1667. The king felt encouraged when he heard of the success achieved by Shivaji against the Mughals in the Deccan between 1663 and 1665. Lasit Borfukon was appointed the general of the Home Expeditionary Army and Autan Buraguhain, the Prime Minister, volunteered to be his deputy. The Expeditionary Army started from Gorgao in August 1667 and concentrated at Koliabor. At that time, the city of Guwahati was mostly on the north bank of the river with only few houses on the south bank. Over the centuries, the position has got reversed in this regard. Lasit assessed that he had enough resources to capture Guwahati before the Mughals could obtain reinforcements from Rongamati or Dhaka. Apart from being the headquarters of Mughal governor in occupied Ahom territory, Guwahati had a great strategic importance. The river Brahmaputra between Kamaikha and Horaighat is the narrowest at Guwahati with hills on both the banks of the river. 
This area was densely forested and road network was very poor. The Brahmaputra waterway was the most important line of travel and communication. A large army moving in this region had to make use of the Brahmaputra waterway. Lasid first struck at Borjara fort at the junction of Bornodi and the Brahmaputra. The Mughal garrison was driven out from the fort and their counter-attacks defeated. Mughal reserves came up to the north bank and prevented further Rahum advance but could not dislodge them from Borjara fort. Lasit now shifted his attention to Hukreshwar hill on the south bank where the Mughal had a fort which also served as the headquarters of the Mughal governor. Ahom commandos led by Lasit's able commander Ismail Siddiqui, popularly known as Bagh Hazurika, managed to infiltrate inside this fort under the cover of darkness and neutralize the cannons by pouring water through their mouth and over their stock of gunpowder. This was followed by a heavy cannonade by the Ahoms and a determined assault of the fort. The Mughal governor Syed Firoz Khan was taken prisoner and a large number of Mughal soldiers were captured. The Mughals abandoned Guwahati. Lasit then advanced down the Brahmaputra to Manoch, recovering all the Ahom territories ceded to Mirjumla. Having liberated Guwahati and Ahom territory till Manoch in November 1667, Lasit now realized that the Mughal emperor was bound to send a large army to avenge this defeat. He therefore set about organizing the defense of Guwahati and be prepared for the anticipated Mughal invasion. This required mobilization of all available young men and construction of the most elaborate defense system. The news of the debacle suffered by his soldiers at Guwahati reached Aurangzeb by the end of 1667. In January 1668, he nominated Raja Ram Singh, son of Mirza Raja Jai Singh, as the commander-in-chief of Mughal Expeditionary Army to Assam. Mirza Raja Jai Singh was one of the ablest military commander of the Mughal army. He was the only Raja during Mughal rule to have been given the title of Mirza Raja. He had the unique record of successfully commanding the Mughal army at Kandahar, Balkh and Munger. And he was also the only Mughal general to force Shivaji to come to terms at Purandar. Shivaji had then agreed to go to Aurangzeb's court at Agra, escorted by his son Ram Singh. Although no patch on his father, who had by now died, Ram Singh had been groomed by him and was regarded as an able general. The Mughal expeditionary army under Ram Singh consisted of 30,000 infantry, 15,000 archers, 18,000 Turkish cavalry, 5,000 gunners with over 1,000 cannons and a large flotilla of boats. It moved up the Brahmaputra from Dhaka to Assam. Portuguese and other foreign gunners accompanied this army. Lasit's spies kept him informed of the progress of Ram Singh's advance. He had organized an impregnable defense system on both banks of the river at Guwahati. He was concerned about the superiority of Turkish and Arab horses of the Mughal army which could not be matched by the small ponies of the Ahoms. Lasid decided to avoid fighting on the plains and force the enemy to fight in the hills, jungles and on water. A mass mobilization of the people had been effected and 100,000 men had been deployed to man the elaborate defense system. Defenses were constructed on both banks of the river from Kamaikha and Horaigat in the west to Nobogroh and Borjuda in the east. All-round defense was provided on both banks and there was also depth in defenses. Sectors were allotted to commanders, each one of whom was given reserves, a unit of Surbosa, who were commandos come spies, and material for repairing any breach in fortification. Men were posted in prepared positions at gaps of 9 feet on the plains and 13 feet on the hills. Lasit positioned himself at Hukreshwar Hill 
and Otan Buraguhai, the Prime Minister who was acting as his deputy, took a position at Lothia Parbat on the north bank. Defences were also constructed on the river line on both the banks to prevent the enemy attacking from the riverfront. Besides the extensive line of fortification on both the banks, defences were also erected on the Umanando island in the river and on the sand banks. The latter presented a problem because the level of water in the river changes with the seasons. Thus, the preparation of defences on the sandbanks had to be delayed till the last moment. The putting up of such a massive defensive network required a tremendous effort. Lassie drove his men very hard to complete this stupendous task. It is said that when his own uncle was found negligent in construction of defences in his sector, Lassid beheaded him and while doing so, he is reported to have said, My uncle is not greater than my country. Even today, this remark is quoted in Assam to emphasize upon the preference for allegiance to duty over personal interest. The Mughal invading army reached Rongamati in February 1669. Ram Singh now advanced into Assam. Lasith had deployed covering troops at Manoch. They strategically withdraw according to the plan without getting involved in heavy engagement with the Mughal army. The covering troops imposed a delay of six days on the Mughal army, gaining valuable time to enable Lasith complete his defense preparation at Guwahati, particularly the stockades on the sandbanks in the river as I spoke of before. By March 1669, Ram Singh arrived at Hajo and made contact with Ahom defenses at Guwahati. The fighting at Guwahati lasted for more than a year till April 1670. There were five distinct phases of this long drawn out battle. In the first phase, from March to May, the Mughals made several attempts to break through Ahom defences and enter Guwahati city. They attacked Khoraighat but failed to make a dent in Ahom defences. Ram Singh got an underground passage dug but this attempt was frustrated by the Ahoms who released water from the moat of the fort into the underground passage. The Mughals abandoned the attack on Khoraighat and swung their thrust towards north through Dorong by passing Ahom defences to attack Borjoda fort in the east. This attack was also repulsed. The Mughals could not make any headway on the south bank and Ahom avoided any engagement in the open spaces of the plains where the Mughals could bring their superior military strength. In the next phase, the Mughals sent their assault troops in boats up the river from the west to attack both the banks across the riverfront. They did manage to breach the defence near Pandu on the south bank, but this breach was soon repaired. At this stage, Lasith launched a naval attack and dispersed the Mughal flotilla. With the onset of heavy monsoon, in July 1669, Mughal offensive came to a halt. Mughal units got bogged down in mud and also got isolated from each other due to emerging water streams. The homes were at an advantage as they were more used to the terrain and the climate. They carried out series of raids against isolated Mughal camps, mostly by night. Ram Singh was highly critical of Ahom guerrilla tactics, contemptuously calling it a thieves affair. He even challenged Lasith to a duel. After the monsoon, the Mughals got a little respite and Ram Singh tried his hand at negotiations. He offered a bribe of 3 lakhs to Lasith Borfukhan for abandoning Guwahati, but this offer was outright rejected. Ram Singh now tried a deceptive tactic. A letter addressed to Lasith was attached to an arrow and shot into an Ahom camp. It mentioned that he had been paid a lakh to evacuate Guwahati, but he had failed to do so. The letter found its way to the king at Gorgaon, causing intense suspicion about the loyalty of Lasith. Fortunately, the Prime Minister Aton Buraguhai saw through Ram Singh's trick and went back to convince the king of Lasith's loyalty. However, the king was still unhappy that the army had remained inside its defences and had not launched any major offensive. The king ordered that an offensive be undertaken. He also sent garments worn by slave girls and access to Lasith, declaring that 
if an offensive was not launched, Lasith and his commanders would have to wear these clothes and their hearts would be ripped open with axes. Much against his wish, Lasith was forced to carry out the king's orders and send a force to Alaboy plains to attack the Mughal army in the open. The Mughal welcomed this opportunity and sent a cavalry force under Mir Nawab to deal with the Ahoms. Lasith was very conscious of the weakness of his army while engaging the Mughal cavalry on the plains. He attacked in four lines with the rear line digging trenches on the plains to provide a way to stop attacking forces. The Ahom could not withstand the assault of Mughal cavalry and their first three lines were overrun soon. However, the Mughal assault was halted at the line of the trenches and the Mughal commander Mir Nawab was taken a prisoner. At this stage, Ram Singh personally joined the battle with fresh reserves. This changed the course of the battle. The homes were routed on the plains and suffered the death of 10,000 soldiers. This avoidable disaster was suffered due to the insistence of the king to undertake an offensive despite the advice of Lasit against it. However, the fortification on the hills around Guwahati, so meticulously prepared by Lasit, remained free from any violations. Ram Singh now decided to launch a massive naval assault on the river and break through our home defences. A large fleet of boats was organised for a naval engagement. Some big boats mounted 16 cannons each. At this time, Lasith had taken ill and was running high fever. He was at Hukresor Hill and he could see the approach of the large Mughal fleet and the panic among his soldiers. The soldiers were already demoralized after the Alaboy disaster and upon learning about their commander-in-chief being ill, they were fast losing the will to fight and they began to retreat. Lasid had himself carried on a cot down the slopes of Hukresor Hill to the nearby Diguli Pukhuri Lake, which served as his secret Naukhal naval base and where he had hidden a fleet of smaller boats. As a part of his elaborate defense system, he had the lake connected to the river after digging through the embankments. Lasid, despite suffering from high fever, personally led an assault with these boats. Moving headlong against the bigger Mughal fleet, this had an electrifying effect on his soldier. They rallied behind him and a desperate battle ensued on the river Brahmaputra. The river got littered with clashing boats and drowning soldiers. In this furious engagement, Lasit managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. The Mughals were decisively defeated and they withdrew to Rongamati. Our home territory up to Manoch was once again liberated. Thus ended the Battle of Horaighat in a glorious Ahom victory despite all odds. In these moments of triumph, however, Lasid Barfukon's health deteriorated further and the legend passed away a few days later due to severe illness. Seldom in the history of military exploits has a general distinguished himself on both land and water as Lasid Barfukon did at Guwahati. Lasid Barfukon demonstrated how, through an elaborate preparation and use of terrain, a weaker army can defeat a superior army. He showed exemplary loyalty to his people, the land and his king, and outstanding leadership in battle. The general of Mughal army, Raja Ram Singh, paid a handsome tribute in his dispatches, both about the Assamese soldier and to the leadership of Lasid Barfukon. He wrote that every Assamese soldier is expert in rowing boats, in shooting arrows, in digging trenches and in handling guns and cannons. I have not seen such specimens of versatility in any other part of India. About Lasid Barfukan, he wrote, Glory to the king, glory to the councillors, glory to the commanders, glory to the country. One single individual leads all the forces. Even I, Ram Singh, being personally on the spot, have not been able to find any loophole and an opportunity. This was the story of the legendary Lasit Barfukan. Joy Ayahom. Echo
মুসলমান এক দিপন মুগল মুক্ত এটিবাদ শরাই ঘাটার এই যুজা রুজাত খেতি প্রণ মুগল মুক্ত এটি বাদ খৌ হরাই ঘাটার এই যুজার ঝাট এই দৃশ্য পথর তুমি বিধি জাতির মাতির বাবে তুষ বোলা তোমার শুনিত হরি করু প্রণাম 